Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! Messiah has come home once again. And you want to hear some shocking news? It's freaking raining again. Unbelievable. Every every show since coming out here, with the exception of like twice, it's rained. And this time, it's raining sideways, it's raining upside, it's raining upside down for Christ's sake. I got to say, though, I'm happy it's not snow because right now we'd be under like a bazillion feet. So take it for what it is. Um, I can't stand when it rains. I don't want to get wet. Um, so you know what? It wasn't that crazy, that wild of a combat sports weekend. So I was able to reflect a little bit. I, I did some reflecting. Um. I watched the resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts again. And, man, first of all, for those of you wrestling fans, you guys know how much of a tearjerker that is. But then I went and saw Creed 2. And I got to tell you something. For someone that has daddy issues like me, it was like a weekend of bowling. I I. I I finished the weekend like yes, and not just because of what happened with Chuck and Tito, but we'll get into that much, much later. Um, then I was also talking to my next door neighbor, and he's a male nurse, and he's really big into the health and the fitness and the getting better and, and all that malarkey, because listen, vegans are going to die just as fast as the rest of us, so you know. You might as well go and go with a smile, right? So, what he told me was, Cyclomon, what you need to de- what you need to do is you need to try some ginger water, man. So this morning, after going to the dojo, I tried some ginger water, man, and I gotta admit, it's not that bad. I mean, I'd like it a little bit better if it was carbonated and I could call it ginger ale, but. Um, <laughs> so I want to remind everybody, check out CycloneComedy.com, check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. As you're watching this, click share. It's really easy. It's just boop and you're done. You don't have to spend no money. You don't have to do anything really. It's just pushing a button. Click share and let your friends get in on this. Uh, so what we're going to do is, when we come back from a break, we are going to just wrap up this lovely weekend of sports combat. We're going to have some segments. We're going to have some fun. And we're going to do all that right after this break. This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian, Tim Bosch. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. The MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Chuck it up. And you got the guts. Step in the cage with Cyclone.
right, first of all, hello, Susan. I knew you weren't going to forget. I knew you were going to be on. You're right on the ball, Susan. I, I love that. Thank you so much. Um, anyway, so let's start with the easier things, all right? Let's go to one championship, which was entitled this time Conquest of Champions. Um, Akira Fujisama, who's 39 years old, okay? He is a, a cage veteran if there ever is one, okay? Was taking on Rocky Barto, and he's 19. This was his second or third fight in one championship. And look, here's the thing. Every youngster, every hot prospect, every blue chip in an organization who's starting to skyrocket eventually has to take on that one big name just, just to see if he could get over the hump and, and get to the next level, right? And that's what this basically was. And Rocky held his own for a while. Rocky did... Rocky did almost as good as, like, a Rocky Balboa, actually. Rocky did really good. He was leg-kicking. He, he was he was pushing the action early on, but, man, Fujisama is just one of those guys whose gas tanks don't end. Okay, this guy can fight forever. And eventually the tide started to turn, and Akiru TKO'd him. With 20 seconds left in the fight, after a good back and forth brawl, and it's something you guys definitely should look into. Once again, one championship is now a major player in the game. Thank you very much for sharing, Susan. Um, but one championship is now that it is a player, other organizations are going to have to look out because. Look, they have the financial backing now that they didn't have before. There's something like $6 billion totally invested in the company. And if you look at the UFC was sold for 4.2. These guys have $6 billion in investment backing them. They got the money. They, 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 they. It's just, here's the thing. This card on the East Coast... Started at 5 a.m. I don't know how many people on the East Coast can not be up at 5 a.m., but can be up and watching, you know, something other than themselves in the mirror getting ready for work. Don't know. But I sat there, I watched it because I don't have to do anything except for write about MMA. Um, but... Another great fight was the Jerry Miato fight. And whew, he TKOs Peng Yong Jung in 35 seconds into round two. He mauled him in round one. And then he took him apart really fast in round two. And that is video clip number one. And then Jeremy Miato jumped off. Chin, gets the sign of weakness and starts letting him fall and Yuji Shimano was forced to jump in that's insane that is insane when, when someone is that hot and, and I'm just watching it over I can watch Jeremy Otto a million times and look, once again, and I've said this a billion times, I've written about it, I'll say it again. The one championship fighters, they're, they're not, I'm not going to say they're, they're worse than the UFC or the Bellator guys, but they are so underrated. And, and all they do is train, all they do is practice, 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 that, that's all they do is work on their skill set. There isn't the media obligations that we have there in North America. So it shows in what they do inside the hexagon, I believe, is what they fight in. 
of what else? Oh, oh, how do I forget about this? When you mix two heavyweights that are, and, and it's rare to have a heavyweight that's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, let alone two of them. But uh, Alexander Machado and Hideki Sekine, who was nicknamed, by the way, Shrek, because he actually kind of looks like Shrek. I'm not even kidding. You don't see Asians with big afros, but not that Shrek had an afro, but facially he looks like Shrek. And he moves like Shrek, too. They, they have the ground game. These guys would be so awesome here in the States. They have the ground game, and they throw like regular heavyweights, okay? And Alexander clipped Shrek in the second round, gets his back, and just but ding but ding but ding Nonstop till the ref jumps in for a quick take, a quick TKO. Uh, and then Edward Foliang, who is the face of the organization, at least as of now, um, unanimous decision over Amir Khan to reclaim his one championship, lightweight championship belt. It's going to be very, very interesting to see what, if anything, Eddie Alvarez does against this kid. He's never faced anyone like him in the UFC or in Shoto or in Bellator or anywhere. Edward Foliang is a lightweight that moves like a flyweight. Laser fast and his precision is like Connor's. Hey, Brian. I'm happy those are two fingers and not one. Thank you very much. Um, honestly, I don't know if Eddie Alvarez can beat Edward Fuliang. I really don't. It's That's something that I at least look forward to seeing. I know Eddie Alvarez will have success there. How much? I don't know. These guys are a different breed of animal that he's used to. Then, after a two-year hiatus, their heavyweight champion returned, Brandon Vera. And it took him 65 seconds. That's a minute five for those of you who don't know what. 65 seconds actually is. It's the shortened version. Um, he KO'd Mario Sorelli like that. Just a vicious left hand moving backwards. And I think I've only seen something like that three or four times. I know uh, Nganu's hit people like that. I know Stipe's hit people. Like, Stipe put out, I believe, Verdum with the left hand going backwards. Anyways, you know what? That's clip number two. Moving backwards, looking for the knot. Bingo, right on the button with that fade away left hook. Look at this, going back, chin up to protect, right on the chin. I told you, that's... I mean, look, it didn't appear, it's not like it's some big, crazy, you know, whack. It's not like that. It's moving backwards and, and, and from here to here, that's incredible to have that much power in your fist, in your, in your, in the torque of your body. And he really didn't even torque it either. He just, oh, left hand, like. Jeez, that is a gift from God if you can do that. There's what, like 0. 0.00000000 half a percent? 
of people on the planet that could do that. That's nuts. Man, it is, Susan, right? I, I'm like, wow. Um, now moving along to the UFC's buried card in Beijing. Look, here's the deal. The one good thing about cards being on the other side of the planet is they start ridiculously early here on the East Coast. It was, I think, th their early prelim started like 5.30, 6 a.m. on Saturday. That's cards done by 9.30, 10 a.m. Although I think this one went to 11 in the morning. Then you could go do your shopping, which I didn't have to do because I don't have anybody to shop for. I know. Everyone right now is... But anyways, um, Weiling Zhang, another big win. She is now on a, an 18-fight win streak. That's... You know, like... I get it, Khabib is 27-0, and 0, but, but an 18-fight winning streak... And this is going to sound so sexist. For a chick... That's, that, that, that's, that's hard to believe it. What do you mean nobody wants to get, listen, Susan, you, if I could get up that early, you could get up that early. You know, like they say, sleep when you're dead. And for me, that might be sooner than later. Um, anyways, Weiling Zing is now, seriously, she is a strawway contender. Has to be. 18 fights in a row, she's finished people. Look out, Thug Rose. Um, anyways, that's going to be video clip number three. To try and maintain some space in this, uh, in this triangle position. Oh, Omba, look at this. There's a tap. Wow. What a victory. Look, Jessica, ask, Jessica Aguilar is on right now what you call a bit of a slip and slide. I'm not saying she's done. I'm not saying she shot her load. But if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. You know what I mean? She... I don't want to say she's out of the title picture, but, but she's going to have to go on a significant win streak to even get to a top contender, let alone... Challenge for a belt. Like I said, Wei Ling, though, I think that's a really good matchup for Thug Rose. I, I really do. And it's a good thing Joanna Champion is going to 125, probably, most likely, because once again, the people on the other side of the planet, I can't drill this into everyone's heads enough. Whether it's Malaysia, India, Russia, Asia, all these other countries, this is all they do. 24-7, 365, like a well-oiled machine. And it's, some, it's something that when you fight someone from there, you're going to have to change your training camps if you want to win. You go, you're going to have to go through like a hellish type training camp. You, you can't just do a regular training camp. You can't because you're going to lose. You, you actually lose when you sign the fight agreement. That's when you lose. Um, now, those three finishes that we've seen so far are good finishes. You might even say that on that card, the Overeem and the... the Francis Ngannou finishes would be good too, but new segment, finish of the weekend, and here it is. The other thing as well, you know, you've got to think he's been knocked down that first round. Oh, that's oh. a big side kick. Oh, he's down. As he turtles up, wow. that's the finish. 
Li Jing Lang, again, he's one of my favorite fighters. If if you have the ability to sidekick someone and just have them crumble like that. And it, he wasn't even, F, F, again, not even full torque. He didn't even put anything into the kick. And it's that much power. It, it's a pr- precision personified. Double word score on Scrabble right there. Precision personified. Okay? Like a double word of the day right there. It is pure beauty to... to to do that to somebody. Now, as far as Overeem and Ngannou are concerned, both of their finishes are good. They're both back on the win- on winning streaks. Have those two go at it again. As a matter of fact, Ngannou actually, when, when he went through the list of people he wants to fight post-fight, for the first time, it actually made sense. Most of the time, a fighter... I want the champ. I want a title shot. I want this person. And guy who actually went over everyone he's lost to, and it's actually that actually makes sense. Let him fight over him because they're on the same timetable now. Him against Overeem, February, March, because neither one of them took damage. Okay, you do that. I think uh, I wish it could be January, the the first ESPN card in, in the Barclays Center. I wish to God it could be. That's just you know it's it's November, December, January. That's that's two guys going right back into training camp. That's a little bit too soon. I'm thinking end of February, March. Those two have to fight again, and then if Ngannou wins again. You give Ngannou Stipe again. Which is, speaking of Stipe, let me say this. I freaking hate. Freaking hate. I know people say, oh, don't hate. Hate is bad. Love Trump's hate. No. I hate the new UFC website. By the way, if you check on rankings, Stipe's in, you know, you can see Stipe in the top 15. But if you separate it to... Fighters by division, Stipe isn't even listed as a UFC fighter in the heavyweight division. I don't know if they're trying to tell him something or or what, but there are so many issues with the new website. Hate it. Um, Anyways, let those two, February, March... Go at it. They deserve they deserve a, a rematch. Alistair deserves it for everything he's done. And let this be his last run at a championship. I think at the age of 43, four, almost 44, this could be it for him. Uh, I want to remind everybody, CycloneComedy.com. Psyche Prods on Facebook. Send in your question on the question thread. Enter the raffle and you can possibly win a prize. Every UFC pay-per-view. Predictions. Best record at the end of the night wins a free prize. I'm always giving. I'm giving to you. Because I love you guys just so freaking much. Uh... Also, got to remind you guys, right here on Strong Island TV, after me, Pinups, Cool Cats, and Comics. And on that show is Mr. Trevor Gillies, who was here just a couple weeks ago, is now on there. Trevor Gillies talking Islanders, talking fighting, talking, I don't know why, but he's going to be talking a lot. I can guarantee you that much. So, share this show. And share Pinup School Cats and Comics too after me. And we're going to talk a little bit more right after this.
Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Murgliata. I'm Derek Morrison. I'm Nick the Carney Lentz, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. Hey, Brian Horan. Diet Snapple. I just did that to piss you off because I know. Stop drinking the iced tea. Actually, Brian, this is half and half. It's only half iced tea. Half lemonade. Um. So let's get into it. Let, let's get into the. And yes, you know what, Susan? I'm better than Vanna White. And you know what? Maybe maybe next week I should come in like a gown like Vanna, you know, with my hair up or what's left of my hair up. Do 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 do. I do it like that. How'd you like that, huh? Um. So, anyways, let's get let's get into this whole Tito Chuck mess, because God knows that's what it was. And look, I'm I'm a ride or die guy with Chuck. I have been. Chuck's my guy. Chuck. Is the is this tie at first with Tank Abbott the reason why I'm into MMA? But look, let's go over the positives first as far as the whole thing with Tito and Chuck. Um, Francisco Estrada, okay, is a positive. Uh, Jay Silva is a positive. And Duran Wynn is a positive. Now, you had to think eventually Duran Wynn would, would get some recognition. Um, only because training at AKA with DC, with Kane, with Khabib, with Luke Rockhold, with the violent Bob Ross... He was going to eventually catch wind, okay? I'm impressed. It's actually the first time I was able to watch Duran win. And he he is an AK he has the AKA blueprint on him. He he moves like every other AKA fighter. But now let's do the list of Negatives as far as as far as this this disastrous mess that went down this weekend. Number one, Oscar De La Hoya, who is a very good boxing promoter, said the fighters are going to be treated with him better than anywhere else because he was a fighter. He wants to give back. He wants fighters to be part of the company, not separate from the company. It's all share and share alike there. Well, look, I understand that Tito and Chuck are the draw. They got to get the lion's share of the money. Duran Wynn, who was co-main event, made ten grand. Look, ten grand's a lot of money. Me personally, I'm in the hole in life fifteen grand. So I would kill for ten grand right now. But that's all he made. Was the numbers good? Look, the gate wasn't bad. A little bit under eight thousand people at the at the event. Not that bad. 
not outstanding, not great, but it was okay. I understand why you need amateurs on the card when you're starting out like this. And look, I'm someone that, that has close ties with a lot of M- amateur MMA fighters. They're the people who, who sell the tickets, okay? They're the ones that a company relies on to put high knees in the seats besides the name. Because you get the names up at top and everyone on the bottom got to sell tickets. In stand-up it's, and in music also, it's called a bringer show. That's what it takes to succeed. No, it's not bull. It's very, very true, Susan. Um, look, as far as the fight itself is concerned, I didn't want it from day one. I was one of, what, only a bazillion guys that said this shouldn't happen? And look, Oscar's right. You can't tell a, a fighter, you can't tell a person when to retire. You, you just can't do it. But th- there's, a, there's a cleaner, better, more respectful way to let a fighter know that he just doesn't have what he used to have. He doesn't have it. To quote Conor McGregor, it looked like he was stuck in the mood. He was stuck in the fucking mood. He didn't move. No, Susan, that, that's what... Uh, only because Duran Wynn let it be known that he made ten grand. I would imagine everyone else made less than that. Um, but remember, the pay-per-views on... Black Friday were cut in half. It, it, there, it wasn't. A, it, it's not making like two million on sales. Okay, it's not making a million on sales. The numbers aren't out. The numbers will come out. I think Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, tomorrow or Wednesday. Put this number down. Take out a pen. Take a paper, and write this number down. I don't think this card made 80,000. I don't think there was 80,000 buys. I really don't. I think it was maybe close to 50, 60,000 range. No way close to even 80,000. Uh, it's... I've said it a thousand times. Tito trains w- with active fighters. Tito, Tito's just still primed. And remember, he's only 43. And guys are fighting into their 43s. This could be his second wind. Now, his wife and his kids don't want him to fight no more. They want him to call it. And honestly, if Oscar worried about the boxing, okay, where he takes care of his fighters, trust me, He's not screwing over Canelo Alvarez, all right? I can assure you that. MMA guys, it's just one person. In boxing, every fighter has a team posse with them, okay? So there's 100 people looking out for every fighter. It's not the case in MMA. As far as Chuck, Tito is concerned, let Tito run the MMA side. Tito knows what's up. Tito, Tito could be a, a, a future if he has his training there, a solid promoter, and it would work. I don't like what he said about Chuck. Oh, if Chuck wants to fight, let's make him a fight. No. No, 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 no. No more Chuck in the cage fighting. No. No. Uh-uh. Look. Chuck, there's always athletes that just don't know when to hang them. Steve Carlton pitched until his arm fell off, and he, could, he couldn't get my dead grandmother out. Okay, The fact of the matter remains, Chuck is now past it. Okay, uh, So, yeah. 
Now, on the positive, another positive side is we're now seeing fighters quickly becoming refs. Because, look, Frank Trigg trained under John McCarthy. Now, Chris Lieben, who, who two weeks ago was fighting in bare-knuckle fighting, was refing on this card. So, you're not going to have the, the bad stoppages. You would at least assume so with fighters going from fighting to refing. Hell, maybe Chuck wants to ref. I can see Chuck refing. I can see Chuck for for uh, Golden Boy MMA. Let him do some color commentary. I wouldn't mind that. Chuck now has his wits about him. Let him do that. Just no more in cage fighting. Uh, I want to get to this this bad situation and. and not only is it an MMA thing, it's, it's a life thing. Ladies, and please, I want everybody to click share and share this. And guys, let your girlfriends and your wives in on this. I want to know, what is it about a chick that she just wants to stay with a guy that beats the living piss out of her? Rachel Ostovich now is no longer on the January card in Brooklyn. Her her boyfriend, who she loves dearly, um, Arno Burden, who is a fighter for Titan FC, who I believe has been cut once this happened, um, was charged with, originally, second-degree attempted murder. Broken orbital bone, Multiple facial fractures. Rushed to the hospital was Rachel. She was vomiting blood. So you can assume that there was at least one or two broken ribs in there too. And the Hawaii DA has now lessened the charges to second degree uh, assault, which is a felony in Hawaii. Don't know what's going to be the case, what how it's going to turn out, but look, ladies, just a PSA for you. If a guy is beating on you, don't say you love him, okay? Because that's really sh- not too bright. It, it's it's not, and I, I hate to say it like that, but it boggles my freaking mind. Okay, there's plenty of good guys out there. I know one of them. Seriously, and and this this is coming on the heels of, of Andrea KGB Lee admitting that 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 being forced to admit that her boyfriend was beating her. And this is MMA fighters for Christ's sake. Ah. <sighs> Look, just do me a favor. Share this. Check out CycloneComedy.com. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. And you know what? When we come back, we're going to start to wrap this shing ding up. Right after this. I'm Dennis Bermudez. Hi, I'm a creepy Ian McCall. Yo, I'm Kelvin Gastelum. This is Mark Goldberg. Yo, I'm the world's most dangerous man. Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock. And you're getting tapped out in the cage with... So, yes, Susan, like I was saying, you you would assume with with former fighters, 
there wouldn't be mistakes. It's a, I don't see negative things. I really don't. Unlike that debacle this weekend, because God. Should, should Oscar continue to do this? Yes. Give fighters another opportunity, another place to fight. And he has a name. Look, that's the fact of the matter. And maybe, you know, because by the way, Bellator does sometimes a double bill. Uh, Bellator MMA, Bellator kickboxing. Same venue, same night, same spot. Maybe that's what Golden Boy should do. Golden Boy MMA, uh, man, uh, Golden Boy MMA, cup of MMA fights, after Golden Boy boxing. Because really, the difference between the two is MMA is a main event, a co-main, a third fight, and usually a fourth and fifth fight too. In boxing, all you have is the main event, and then it drops off. That That's the big difference besides the press conferences, which don't even get me started on that because that's a whole other thing. So, let's do some fun segments. Let's start with On This Day in MMA History. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. It is a good idea, Susan. Everything I say is a good idea. I, sh- I should just be like supreme emperor of the universe. Um, on this day, only one thing happened. Just uno thing happened, though. Um, and that's as good as my Spanish is going to get. Ruslan Magomedov was born 32 years ago. That's it. Nothing else happened today. Uh, let's spin the wheel of, of everybody's lovingness for the raffle. Okay, number five. <laughs> Question number five, Curtis Williams. Your question is, will Tito fight again? Now, look. Should he fight? I don't know. I really, really don't know. Uh, I hope not. But if he did, you know what? There's a couple of fighters still fighting that, that he lost to that maybe he'd want to rematch to get those wins back. Uh, Big Nog, although he's probably not ever going back to the UFC. Um, Liam McGarry, although I don't I don't see that happening. But you know what? Leota Machida is now in Bellator. Maybe he rolls it back with Leota Machida. Maybe I don't want to see Rampage, uh, and I don't want to see King Mo either. I heard both those names. I don't like those, but. Anyways, Curtis, you are now possibly eligible to win a prize. Your heads, by the way. Now, the person that's going to be tails is number three, Susan Walker. Okay. Do you think Oscar would have, should have been a lot better promoting uh, his first MMA card? Yeah, Susan, he should have. But he's going into something that he knows nothing about. I think if he does a Golden Boy MMA 2, he'll know. He He's not that dumb. He's heard enough of the negativity. He's heard enough of the issues. He's heard enough of the situations where I honestly think he's learned his lesson. He'll have... More of an MMA presence. Maybe he double books it with an with a boxing card. So, Curtis, you are heads on my Japanese quarter. Susan Walker, you are tails. And the winner of the prize is going to be whoa, almost dropped it. Tails, Susan Walker. Congratulations, you beat Curtis Williams. You win, Susan, and before you ask me, yay, what did I win, you'll see when it comes in the mail. Um, And that is just going to be that. Uh, Let's do something brand spanking new. Let's just spotlight somebody. Spotlight. 
Okay. So, here's who I'm going to spotlight. And it's not really someone in MMA just yet. Oh, really? Sure. Sure you weren't, Susan. Um, 25-year-old Australian. And, and once again, people on the other side of the planet train a lot differently than here in the States. Um, there is a 25-year-old Australian named Alex Simon. As I take a quick time out right here. Sorry, Brian Horan, I needed another sip. Um, Alex Simon is 6'3". Alex Simon, like I said, is 25. Alex Simon is 380 pounds. That's a long way away from being a heavyweight fighter. It's a long way away from being a super heavyweight fighter. But what Alex Simon is is a powerlifter that holds 18 powerlifting records. He is now getting into kickboxing. He's had five kickboxing matches. And I don't believe he was at 380. I think he had to cut down to, I think like 350 they made him cut down to. Five fights in kickboxing. Five and oh. Five vicious, vicious, nasty first round knockouts. And you can imagine someone that size and that power. Now, when he shrinks down to 265, where a heavyweight MMA fighter is, does he lose that power? I don't know. But he's training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu right now, so. He has that to fall back on. That is the fighter spotlight of the week. Uh, <coughs> I need another sip. Brian, eat, eat yourself. I haven't done this in a while. Let's talk pound for pound rankings. Especially since I said how much I hate the UFC's new site. I'm going to do a full 15 pound for pound ranking. I, pound for pound, number 15 for me is Yoel Romero. I think eh, it's a tie between him and Luke Rockhold. I'll give the slight edge to Yoel just because his wrestling spot on. Yeah, he misses weight a couple times, but his, his wrestling is so damn dangerous. Um, number 14, the Motown phenom himself, Kevin Lee. Number 13 is the Lionheart, Anthony Smith. Coming in at number 12, Henry Cejuto. On my number, uh, number 12 on my pound for pound list. Number 11, I think you have to give it to Valentina Shevchenko. I think she's that dangerous where a lot of the girls at 125 are going to regret the UFC starting a 125 division. She's going to tear through them. Does that include uh, Caitlin Chukugian? Does that include Liz Caramouche? I don't know. But I think the bullet falls in at number 11. I think number 10 is not going to be a featherweight for that much longer. I'm talking Max Holloway. I think he's the perfect person at number 10. Number 9 on the pound for pound list as far as I'm concerned. Bobby Knuckles, the Grim Reaper. Robert Whitaker. I, I, he is a complete fighter. Stand up on the ground power and I'll tell you if Israel Adesanya wants to climb that mountain right now he ain't ready and I'll get into Israel Adesanya in a few minutes if there's time to um, number 8 Amanda Nunes 
We have the lion heart. Now we have the lioness at number eight on the pound for pound list. Number seven, the freak, El Kukui. T- T- Tony Ferguson is one of the most complete fighters walking the face of this planet. Now, he's a bit of a mental case, but I see Tony Ferguson being down as number seven. Number six, I hate the guy. And this shows you that I can give credit where credit is due. T. Wood. Tyron Woodley has to be number six. Number five, Khabib. We're getting into to the upper echelon fighters now, and... and He's there. No matter how long the the Nevada State Athletic Commission suspends him, right now, as far as I'm concerned, he's number five. Number four, still the baddest man on the planet. I don't care what anyone says. He should be fighting for that heavyweight strap, not Brock Lesnar. I'm talking about none other than Cleveland's own Stipe Miocic. Number three, T.J. Pillishaw, Dillashaw, Killishaw. Lightning fast, powerful, strong, strong as a bull for that size. If, if you put his abilities up at heavyweight, gee-wee, dangerous. Um, number two, still sitting there as far as, I, as far as I'm concerned. The number two pound-for-pound fighter in the world, as always... She's been there for a long freaking time. Chris Cyborg. She's a beast. She is a beast. She's a freak of freaking nature. Number two. Number one. Champ Champ. Daniel Cormier. So that is my top five listing. Um. So really fast coming up this week we have... Uh, the Tough 28 fighter, uh, Tough 28 finale. We have Bellator's 210, 211 coming from Italy. And then Saturday night, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. Go Team Tyson. Um, It's the only time I've ever rooted for somebody named Tyson, by the way. So, reminder for all of you. Guys, please share this. Watch and share the show coming up in just a few minutes. Pinups, Cool Cats, and Comics. And until next week, which will be December. Oi, time flies when you're having fun, folks. I am Cyclone saying, just because you're not an athlete doesn't mean you can't be an athletic supporter. Bye-bye.